Uh, so the chapter ratification process, what do we have here? Um, so there were two amendments approved by the 2022 convention to the Talbot of Pi Constitution. Um, in order for those to be passed, ratification needs to be done by um, each chapter on a chapter by chapter basis. Um, all chapter members are encouraged to review this presentation prior to voting, just so everybody's on the same page about what they're voting on. Uh, some logistics to dive in on how the vote looks. So chapters may conduct the vote via uh, in person or electronically. We see chapters do this at a general body meeting and also through various electronic tools, email and some other resources that I have linked later on in the presentation. Uh, ballots must be received by April 1st, 2023. This is the only uh, report that cannot receive an extension. Uh, the submission must be in by April 1st. It is a graded report for chapters for annual evaluation. Uh, importantly, at least three-fourths of the active chapter members must participate in the vote. We'll kind of discuss some opportunities for how you define active members. Um, chapter approval requires a three-fourths favorable vote of the voting active members. Uh, importantly, abstentions count as no votes. So when you're figuring out your tabulation, keep that in mind. Uh, ratification requires a three-fourths favorable vote of active chapters. So of the 251 chapters, uh, I don't have the calculation right in front of my screen, but we need three-fourths of them to vote in favor of each amendment um, for that amendment to be ratified. Uh, finally, the Executive Council may vote for chapters that do not submit ballots or submit invalid ballots. The invalid ballots will likely be a non-issue going forward, forward, and we'll see why here in a few minutes. But for chapters that do not submit ballots, the Executive Council is empowered to do so. We use this the last couple of years when chapters were um, running into issues because of the pandemic, the Executive Council stepped in to vote in favor of particular amendments. But we hope that all chapters will participate because it is a required submission. So the two amendments up for this year, um, one is the um, adding the position formally to the constitution of the director of the district program. Um, it's been a trial program, uh, program director position, and now after two, three-year trial periods, it's been added to the Constitution at the 2022 convention. Um, Amendment 2 would allow our financial trustee and the trust advisory committee to invest in private equity funds by adding it as an allowable investment option. And the actual changes for these um, are at the link below. I'll pull up that link once we check out the reporting system here in a minute to see exactly what the wording changes are. But these two descriptions provide a good summary for what the actual amendments will do if ratified. So how to actually hold your um, vote. So you can conduct your election as your chapter sees fit. Like I said, that's usually done via in person, but if needed, you could do it uh, via email or text. Um, SurveyMonkey or Google Forms are another good option. There are also several uh, ballot voting uh, web-based products that you can use for free too if you're interested. And previously, we provided a headquarters Google form sheet. I think we'll be moving away from that. We didn't see too much use of that. But if you need an option, we can try to work that out with you as well. Uh, things to keep in mind, only active members should be able to cast a valid ballot. So what is an active member? Well, each chapter defines that, how it sees fit. Check your bylaws for how um, an active member is defined on a chapter by chapter basis. Um, you may also, at the time of a vote, um, the chapter advisory board may vote to make a, any number of members inactive. Um, maybe that's those that do not show up for the meeting, um, and you know that can be reversed later on. Uh, we do not track active members at the headquarters level, so that, again, is a chapter basis of determining who is active and who is not. Um, ballot options should include affirmative, negative, and abstention if you're sending out the ballot for vote and it's not a present vote. Uh, it takes more than a majority vote for a chapter to vote in the affirmative. Like I said, it's a three-fourths of the active members most must vote, and 75% of all votes, affirmative, negative, and abstentions must be in the affirmative for a ballot to be ratified at the chapter level. Um, when we send out this presentation, here's a link to some of the commercial products that you may use. Um, the first one, Poll Everywhere, we use that for text voting at the convention in the past. Uh, we also have used Election Buddy, but there are several great products. Again, we encourage in-person voting, but there are options should you need to do so virtually. 
Okay, so the new ballot report. Um, this is um, added to the reporting system this year. Previously, chapters would either need to mail or scan in a copy of a physical ballot form that we provided. Um, ended up taking a long time and quite an extensive process, so we try to get that into the reporting system. So beginning with this year, all submissions must be done in the chapter reporting system. We will no longer be accepting the form as we have in the past. Uh, chapters will also have the ability in the future to review past year's ballots. That will start with this year's, so um, future officers will be able to look back and see how the chapter voted on certain things to get an idea. Uh, the system also pre prevents invalid submissions. So um, in the past chapters, if the form was submitted with um, counts that didn't add up to the active membership reported, um, it would be considered an invalid ballot. The system does not allow that. You'll still want to work internally on getting all of your active members to participate, or at least 75% of them. And then once you report that out in the reporting system, it should all flow correctly. Now I'm going to move real quick to the actual reporting system. So I'm logged in as Tennessee Alpha, so you will likely see um, something very similar when you log in. So here's my home page. You may access the ratification ballot screen by either um, clicking here under Constitution Ratification Ballot, or it's under Other Reports, but a quick way to get there is just go just like that. Uh, you'll see that there's only one ballot listed, and that's this um, academic year ballot for this year. And to actually fill out the information, you'll highlight that and click View Ballot. Uh, you'll be brought to a screen that is essentially the equivalent of what the form used to be like, and we've just provided a way to fill it all in. So first, I want to highlight the actual changes uh, this year. Uh, they are broken down when you click specific changes and um, amendment one and amendment two, as I summarized earlier. Uh, the major changes are just adding a director of the district program to the uh, list of program directors in Article 11 of the Constitution and changing then the sequence of the other program directors. Uh, the second amendment adds the ability for our trustee to invest in private equity funds representing multiple private equity fund managers. Um, that is added to Article I believe, it's like one extra I. I believe it's 13 of the Constitution, but that should um, it, this provides you an actual change as to what the chapter would be voting on. So you can access that anytime by clicking specific changes. Um, so here, uh, we'll go through kind of like a sample of what the process would be like. So assume that you have 50 active members of your chapter. Um, and we'll break that down to 45 undergraduates, four, let's say three graduate students. Uh, oh, I have actually two. How about that? Okay, adding up to 50. So 45 active undergraduates three active graduate students and two active alumni members in your chapter. And again, it's up to you, your chapter, how you define active. So then if we have 50, our total votes here must add up to 50. Otherwise, the system will not allow me to continue. So we're going to say that I had 45 votes. Maybe I had four negative votes and one abstention. Um, and zero absentees. Again, the system, you'll see that that red warning message that was there has disappeared. Uh, let's say that then I disagree with this one and I only have 20 affirmative votes, 25 negative votes, uh, five abstentions, and zero. You'll know that the, set, the vote is automatically populated based on the logic of the vote. Uh, this one was the, in the affirmative and this one is in the negative. Uh, it is very important that um, you report the vote exactly as the chapter did it. And by checking this box here at the bottom, am I named a blue? I attest that this is the accurate vote of the chapters on the amendments listed above. I would check that and I would provide my name here and press submit. And I won't right now, but if I did, then I would see a message that the ballot has been submitted. Any changes to it, let's say you had a typo or whatnot, would need to be um, sent to chapters at tbp.org and we will manually update your ballot for you. You will not be able to revise it once you press the submit button. You will see that it is submitted and like any other report, it'll mark, be marked as submitted on your reporting 
page home screen, and you will also receive a grade for this report as well. Okay, so we finished up reviewing that. Um, again, this is brand new, so we'll be watching for any bugs that may happen. I think we've squashed both of them, but if there's any that you run into, just let us know and we'll fix that as well. I believe so. If you, if the chapter considers them an active member of the chapter. So, okay. yes, I believe, because they are part of the advisory board too. Got it. So they would you. be counted under the alumni members of the chapter. Okay, got it. And if I said wrong on this one, then I will issue a correction on when we send this out. But I'm pretty sure that's the case. <laughs> 